What's up everybody? On this Mileage Unknown, I'm working on a car that you guys haven't seen in a long time and it's been sitting in my driveway for way, way longer than it should have. I'm sure the neighbors haven't been happy with me, but hey, the car's registered. What can you do, right? Unfortunately, Poopy is starting to deteriorate and looking rough just sitting in the driveway. It needs a wash, it needs a wax, it needs a whatever. I'm afraid when I wash this car, half of the paint is falling off. So I'm gonna walk you through kind of what happened and where the car is, why it sat so long, even after I, it, I got it running with my help of my buddy Trevor and uh, some of the parts and pieces that we've got laid out in hopes that I can cobble this thing back together good enough to make a drive. I, you know, some of the stuff I kept wanting better parts, this, that, the other, blah, blah, blah. I'm not restoring this car. This is a car that I just wanted to drive. Oh, my light kicked on. Car that I just wanted to drive and keep on the road. And then when something goes sideways and I didn't do a very good job at diagnosing it because my friend Trevor came over and freaking two seconds later, the car's running. He's looking at me like I'm an idiot. Um, and I caused all the problems <laughs> that still need to be taken care of at this point. I say I caused it. It's an old car. Everything's breaking as it's coming apart. So let's flip you around. We're going to hop in the car and kind of take a look. Granted, in the last week, I put on these sweet saddle blanket seat covers. So Poopy is pretty much fully restored at this point. That's the best the interior's ever looked in this car. <laughs> I must say, I wonder... Who in the 70s thought these beige yellow door panels, a brown dashboard, black carpet, the steering wheel's actually gray, the headliner was gray and falling apart, and everything's kind of a yellow color. In the 70s, did we really think this wood grain, white, gray, brown, gray, whatever shenanigans looked good? Come on. But hey, the saddle blanket seat covers, they match right in and the car is mint. Oh, now look at this fun mess we got going on here. I came home one night driving Poopy, shut the car off. Next day, Poopy would not start. Would not start no matter what I did. And that led me down a path that led to this mess right here. Here's Poopy's original cluster, which completely disintegrated as I took it out of the car. Now, I had a buddy tell me that um, some of these cars, that the bolt gauge would burn out and cause the car not to start because all the power runs through that bolt gauge. And you can see right there that the circuit board for my cluster is pretty well trashed, right? So I'm like, oh, okay, let's take that out. Nope, that's not the problem. So we did that. Then, didn't make a difference, back in the car. Now I'm taking the steering wheel off, everything out, the ignition switch, which if I still have a clip, I will show you what the old switch looked like. I mean, you would turn the key and the whole switch was exploding and going back together. I'm like, that's gotta be why the car won't start. Let's put a new switch in it. Nope, didn't do it not what was causing the car not to start. So now, as we take everything apart, <sighs> new ignition switch doesn't work. Of course, oh, the turn signal switch broke, so I've got a new one of those. Something else in the column broke. So <laughs> the steering wheel lock might not work anymore. Um, the threads on this got janky, so I had to tap and die and whatever, the column and the nuts, and it's still questionable once the steering wheel goes back on. I don't plan on taking it off anytime soon. More, 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 and the car still never starts. <sighs> so my buddy comes over. Granted, I'm testing voltage at the starter and the blah, 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 and, you know, I'm used to a Volkswagen that has less wires than that in the whole car. People are telling me these connectors are bad, which every connector under the dash of this car 
is going to have to be put back together with zip ties because they're all just disintegrating. So yeah, I'm afraid to touch these, but I'm pulling out, cleaning them, still nothing. Come to find out, which and I don't know where it is, and I need to do a little cleanup on, on this, right? Oh, there we go. This wire right here just happened to have a fusible link in it. I don't know. My buddy Trevor comes over, hooks up an alligator, he clips that wire, hooks an alligator clip, puts a wire over to the battery, boom, poopy fires right up. Ever since then, the car sat. Because I don't know what I'm going to do. I want a better steering wheel. I want a different this. I want a whatever. Poopy's old cluster completely disintegrates when I take it out. I mean, you can see parts of the hood still on the, the back case for the cluster. So what do I do? I hop online, find a junkyard cluster, and in my mind, I'm taking this bad boy apart. I'm painting it. I'm doing the re-chrome. I'm whatever. I'm going to do all that, right? We want it to look good, don't we? Poopy's restored now with those nice seat covers. But of course, I want to plug it in first because everyone's, everyone says 76 is a one year only. Now, here's kind of the layout on the old cluster from the back on the circuit board. Granted, this pin broke off, which has caused some other problems, so I got to do some shenanigans there. And then we look on the back of this cluster. Okay, wait, we got a little different thing going on here. It's got less pins there. Oh, and the voltmeter is wired directly instead of through the circuit board. Okay, no big deal. I'm gonna pull those wires out of the connector and just wire it up, call it a day. Well, for giggles, I decided to plug this in just to see what happens. And yes, it went horribly wrong because apparently 76, it's not just that that's different. There's different stuff in the whole track. And this is like a radio interference thing, which I believe is built into the case of the this cluster. And so now I have to be as careful as possible taking apart my new cluster, new to me, and this cluster. And then I had to buy a nice new circuit board that was like 150, 60, 70 bucks shipped to me because you have to have this one year only circuit board. So now I've got to take apart this cluster, put the new circuit board on, transfer what I can, the hood, the whatever, and call it a day, right? So now we get into this pin that broke off. It broke off from the connector, which then of course, you guessed it, started to disintegrate. So now I have a problem, right? Now, this isn't the actual connector from that interior side, but it would have been something like this. See how it's got those little, little tangs? Sorry for all the high traffic area today, everyone's driving by. You see those little tangs? They would go into the connector, pull tight, and that's how it would stick. When you plug it in, it doesn't push through the connector. Well, guess what? My connector's trash for that pin. Everything else is still holding on pretty good. Now, I brought home some connector kits from work. None of them had the right connector. And randomly, I found that a regular old wire connector works. Okay, so at this point, I pulled the casing off of one. This is what I got. I'm going to wire, I'm going to crimp that wire in. I'm going to push that through that connector in the spot it needs to go because guess what? It holds on to the cluster pretty darn good. I think that's going to work. Now that was a whole bunch of rambling of problems that I caused just because I didn't know what I was diagnosing originally. I was watching the videos on the YouTubes, just like you guys are. Hope you like and subscribe and do all that jazz to this video. And everything I was following seemed to have a problem with it that made sense to cause what was happening to the car. Come to find out, it's that blown fusible link in that wire. 
now I'm dealing with all this other stuff. And honestly, I'm, I was over it. Poopy's probably sat here six, seven, eight months with the ability to fire up with no steering wheel on it, no cluster, no nothing, just sat there in the driveway. So I'm kind of in the, huh, kind of in the don't get it right, just get it going mindset at this point, right? I mean, it's going to be as right as it possibly can. I'm going to do everything I can. It's going to be as safe as it can be. It's whatever. But I don't need to paint the cluster. I don't need to buy a $200 steering wheel so it looks cooler in that mess of crazy that's in the car, right? If I just want to drive the car, I need to put that new, that new circuit board on the old cluster case and I need to start transferring parts over and start wiring this back up. I need to fix that that uh, turn signal switch. I do have one of those. Um, I am gonna use the new volt gauge that I got and a couple other things. So it's gonna be kind of a splice together between the two. I tell you what, I once we got it running, we found that the brake lights were staying on for some reason. I'm like, great, there's more electrical gremlins, right? So I got under there and the brake light switch was staying engaged to the pedal or not engaged to the pedal so it was keeping the lights on you know how i fixed that well i bought a new brake light switch i was like i'm gonna crawl under there and do it and i'm like wait a minute this switch works okay i bent the bracket to where it needed to be and that took care of the brake lights like i said i'm kind of over it and i just want to drive the car so i'm gonna flip you around again Maybe do some time lapse of me playing with these clusters and I'm praying everyone keep your fingers crossed for me that I'm able to take this stuff apart without breaking the new hood. circuit board. Now, the interesting thing is I'm guessing, and I don't know, that this is essentially the same thing that was on the 67 to 75. That's what's crazy. They used this same circuit board from 1967 to 1975 and they went to one year for 1976. Now the craziest part about that is it probably wasn't even a full year because after 76 they discontinued the darts board, the darts, all that. It went to the Volaris and the Aspens and whatever and they used a completely different setup. So for probably like not even a full year production run they decided to change the circuit board for whatever reason. Now, I actually got nervous when I pulled the circuit board off and saw this because I didn't remember seeing it on the new circuit board and was going, ah, crap, am I going to have to transfer over this radio interference, which is, I believe that's what that is. And I believe that's what this version is. What the difference is, I honestly don't know, but I'm going to... Uh, keep disassembling for now and we'll see how this goes. So far, everything's going really good. Now, these are the little sockets that plug into the back of the cluster. Of course, I'm putting in new bulbs. I mean, both clusters had bulbs. I have no idea how old the bulbs are or not. The older style cluster, the actual bulb holders were larger. And in my original cluster for Poopy, these fit, but these little, the little tangs, the little contacts that actually touch the circuit board when they're plugged in, some of them are a little bent or not, some of them need to be bent just a little, just so I know they're making a little bit better contact. And I'm just taking a little Scotch-Brite pad and just 
cleaning up the ends just a little bit because all of these look fairly crusty. Now, the cluster itself, I swapped over the Speedo from my junkyard one, the fuel gauge and the, the temperature gauge. That's my new ammeter. Um, the only reason why I did it is the needles in the junkyard gauges looked better and the black looked better, which is weird because all of these gauges are actually rusty. There's actually a little bit of rust on every one of these gauges, but they just look brighter and cleaner than the original ones from Poopy. So I don't know what works, doesn't work, but <laughs> that's what we're going with for right now just because they look better. So here's another random thing I thought was funny in a couple of spots in the cluster itself is it's like if you've driven an old car, you know how bad instrument cluster lighting is, right? And you see most of them are just bulbs behind everything directing whatever. So for the, the oil and brake lights over there in the hood, right? They wanted to make sure those were really bright and isolated. How'd they do that? By a super cheap rolled up piece of cardboard <laughs> that goes, that separates the lights. Yeah, that's seventies quality right there for you. <laughs> As I was getting ready to put the cluster back in, the speedometers never worked in this car. And when I got it, there was a new speedometer cable in the trunk. So like any rational person, you would assume the cable's broken, right? So I grabbed the cable, pull it, pull it right through the sheath. No problem. Doesn't look frayed, doesn't look broken, nothing. Sometimes when these cables start to wear out, they start to unwind and they'll catch in the casing and then the speedo will jump and do weird stuff. Well, let's take a look at that cable and see what it looks like. Here's the cable that came out of Poopy. You see both ends. Hmm. Looks pretty good. No fraying, no craziness, nothing. Right? I mean, that end looks a little wonky down in the nut tube. There's the new cable. Now the crazy part is that cable was disconnected at the speedometer when I started this whole deal and at the transmission. So what does that mean? Well, my guess is the old speedometer made a bunch of noise. So for fun, I took the old cable Cut it off. So we could do a little speedometer testing here. <laughs> Threw it in my drill. So this is the OG Speedo out of Poopy. And let's see here. I really don't hear any noise from the speedometer itself. So here's the nice, nicely assembled uh, cluster at this point. Let's see how this one sounds. It's hard to tell if that's making any noise, honestly. So I didn't actually really hear noise from either of them. So I guess until it's in the car, I won't really know. And if it does make noise, I can always reach up, pull it off the Speedo, call it a day. Because I actually drove this car home from Idaho just using my phone as a speedometer, so. We'll see. All right, it's a new day. I am back in the garage with Poopy and I'm hoping to get it buttoned up. We're gonna put in the new speedometer cable. Gotta get the car back, jack back up and I gotta get the cluster in and everything plugged in and buttoned backed up. So hopefully, 
Poopy is going to be running and driving. Now, here's the new Speedo cable. It was in the trunk of the car. Hopefully everything works. Like I said, it's weird that the cable I pulled out of the car, nothing was broken. Um, before I go ahead and put this in, I'm going to lube it up with some white lithium grease. You never want to put these in just totally dry. You're asking for them to wear out prematurely. So I'm going to get this lubed up, the car jacked back up, and we're going to hopefully press on and get the car done. I've got Poopy jacked back up on a jack stand, and I actually throw the jack under another spot in the car just in case it's a super cheap jack don't ever just jack up the car and use the jack man you don't want to be under a car if things go sideways so now because of the larger nut on the transmission end i think it's going to actually be easier when you look at the mess it's got to go through to fish the the speedometer end up through the bottom than to try and get the nut down from the top so I'm gonna crawl under and see what we see. There's where the speedometer cable screws into the trans. And we gotta kinda feed that cable all the way up through the shenanigans up to the top where it goes in. So because it's just me, I'm setting the camera down and working this myself, all right? So I got the speedo cable roughly routed through. Honestly, the hardest part was getting the grommet through the firewall there around all the wires that are yeah you don't want to move them too much because they are old and crunchy but it's roughly routed where it needs to be now there was one of these clips on the cable that came out of the car it looks like it probably clips to a body seam and then the cable fits in there to to help route it and i think i saw one down there still on the car so i'm gonna crawl back in and actually get the cable snapped snapped in where it needs to be you can see the Speedo cable plugged in there. If you follow it, there's actually, so there's actually a little routing body clip there that I need to get some slack back up. I should have caught that first before I plugged everything kind of in, right? Isn't that always the case? So I've got to get a little slack to actually get that plugged in there. Now, this little clip is going to go on the body seam there. So it goes on the body seam there and also routes the cable. So I'm going to need both hands. I just wanted to show you kind of how it was routed. And I should have caught that before I pulled it all the way up. So I've got to... I've got to push the cable back down a little bit to get it into place, but well, shoot here. I thought I was about ready to drop the column back down to be able to get the cluster in and start, you know, putting all the wiring back up and the covers and everything and forgot that I had broken one of the tangs off the turn signal cam. So it should look like that. That's what keeps it that's what keeps the turn signal clicked in whatever direction you're turning until the steering wheel cancels it right um, pretty easy install looks like I've just got to cut a couple wires splice a couple wires pop this bad boy back in and screw the uh, screw the turn signal switch back in goes up under there get that all lined back up and should be good to go then I can start dropping everything down now the kit came with connectors and honestly, look at how much room lack thereof is in this mess. I would have much rather used soldering iron and solder, but guess what? No clue where my soldering iron is and I wanna keep on moving today. So we got connectors and hopefully I can get all this shenanigans in there without them ripping each other out. I'm not gonna lie, this feels like a super duper cheap kit that I got, so who knows how long it's gonna last anyway, right? But man, it is in there, but it feels so stiff and sketchy like all of this is gonna break at any moment, but it's in there. I would check, I probably should hook up the battery and see if uh, see if it actually works before continuing on down the path. Here. Well, I had to screw this down even tighter when I first did it. I wasn't really getting the connection that it should. Now it feels 
even less <laughs> or even more sketchy, but she seems to be working. I'm not going to lie. I'm not recording much of this because to get this cluster back up in there and everything together is frustrating to say the least. The columns completely loose and drop down. I might have broken the dash a little bit more because it's crispy because I'm trying hard not to actually break the cluster housing. And I've still got to get the switches back up there, get everything plugged in, get the speedo cable plugged in. And it's just me. So trying to set up a camera to record any of this is crazy talk. Um, one thing I will show you, because like this switch will have to go through the cluster. You actually have to push this little button in and yank that um, lever out. I don't know if you want to call it a lever, but the button and shaft out. And it feels super sketchy when you do it. And it feels sketchy when you put it back in. But... I got to do that too. So I'm going to keep plugging away. I hope you guys don't mind. I'm not recording me just cursing for the next 30 minutes trying to make this happen. Oh my goodness. One step closer. I took the, the tack off the column to make give me a little bit more room. And I tell you what. I did not think this switch was going to be the one that gave me a problem and I was doing my best to get it snapped in or, you know, started and I just couldn't. I got the connector in, I got the speedo cable in, I got this switch pulled through. This one I just barely got started with one of the nut wheels, I don't know what you call them, I need a different screwdriver or something, but that's like a little wheel that actually pulls the, pulls the switch tight. There's one on this side. They look a little different. So this one actually screws on the outside of that switch. This one goes down into the switch. But I am that much closer. The reason why this side was so hard is, bam, fuse panel in the way. Lots of wires, all kinds of stuff. Trying to get your hand up there, which I don't know what my camera's showing or not, to actually get that switch lined up was a nightmare. There's a reason I didn't record all of that. Look at me, I'm probably beat red right now. So I'm gonna keep plugging along, but we're getting closer. So I decided to hook the battery up and see where we are. So we got, got some lights. That turn signal switch is still sketchy, but no light. That bums me out. I got a light on this side. Nothing on that side. Ugh, old cars. Old cars. Got the cluster in as good as it can be. I wasn't taking it back apart for one turn signal bulb not working right. It seemed like the the alternator gauge is working. I don't know about the tamp. Don't know about the fuel yet. Who knows if the speedo is going to work. Don't know. But before I put the steering wheel back on, I was like, let's see if it fires up. Card, fire up, shut off. Fire up, shut off. Fire up, shut off. Wouldn't stay running. Now, mind you, I just kind of tucked all the wire mess back up where the wire mess used to live and maybe zip tied a little and whatever and like i had said every one of these connectors is just a mess right so then i'm starting to rejiggle wires and plug in and plug out and blah, 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 praying that the car will fire up and finally fires up so I'm going to put the steering wheel back on. Clearly there's a connection or something random somewhere that's probably going to be a problem when I least, least want it to be, right? Um, but the car drove into the garage. It was damn well going to drive out of the garage today. That's for sure. So <laughs> I'm going to finish buttoning up the steering wheel, 
go for a ride, see if maybe the Speedo works. You can tell how my luck with Poopy's gone, so I'm doubting it, but we'll see what happens. Well, just a video follow-up and not an actual ride along with you guys, I know isn't the most exciting, but my first drive, of course, went sideways. I was rolling through the neighborhood, Poopy shut off, died in flight. Got back under the dash, started wiggling everything, fired up, drove around, drove home, no problem. Drove to the gas station, put gas in it, no problem. So there's something in that mess of wiring that is a loose, half, whatever, horrible connection. Now, I'll flip you around really quick and show you a couple things, but I don't know. I don't know how much more there is to explain about an old car with sketchy wiring going on, but let me show you something. So quickly, before, I only had one turn signal. Now both of them seem to work. I put that down to, honestly, that sketchy doorman returned the, you know, the, the cam switch that I, I bought. Um, the fuel gauge seems to work. Granted, it seems to work, but I know the sender is broken in this car at full tank. It'll be full after 100 miles. It just drops down to E, and so you're kind of playing the guessing game. Tack works. The alternator gauge works. I've never been certain if the temperature gauge works. So there she is. After all the frustrations, after all the craziness, the car runs and drives. And yep, I just accidentally honked the horn as I was uh, trying to brace the camera, right? So Poopy is back together running and driving. And you know what? A running and driving car is so much more easier to deal with than one that you have to push around. So I'm excited that Poopy's back together. Might drive it to work this week. We'll see how it goes. That's going to be it for this Mileage Unknown. Stay tuned for more car shenanigans.